Two months ago, I bought this car. And when I bought it, I thought it was in a lot better condition. But after looking at it and going through it, turns out it needs quite a bit of work. So this car was hit. Heater channel is completely rotten. Another bad spot here. Pretty rotted out, so the bolt just spins. The big problem is, this car is supposed to be in a show in a couple months, and I don't like to disappoint. Grabbing it from that with the engine hoist. No. So today, you want to go up the ceiling. The body comes off the floor pan. This is sketchy. Look, it's smoking. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice messaging system. Seven o five. What a lazy guy. Not even. It's nine o seven. Are you guys sleeping? You awake? Good morning. Okay, let's quickly walk through how many bolts are in this thing to get it apart. Um, first off, we're going to start with the struts up front. These guys both have to be undone because it is a super beetle. The struts are going to pop right out. So. Both of them undone. Uh, there's a coupler right here. See, you can just separate the coupler. It's kind of dark, but you get the idea. There's, uh, I believe, eight bolts along this side of the floor pan. There's two in the center, right there. There's gonna be five across the top of your column, I believe, at the back. Five going over the hump. Um, then you got two bolts right here one on each side one there one on the opposite side and really after that it should start separating um, we're just having an issue because the bolts won't quite come out so they're just too rusted uh, it looks like they're original heater channels which is rare because this is a 50 year old car so okay how we're gonna lift it all I've done is screw this up here a 2x8 2x6 put uh, two screws in each joist wrapped a strap around it I'm gonna put a come along on it and then just hook it directly to this beam and pull up we've already done it a couple times everything seems fairly strong so just wing it um, and then the back end back end we've made this little bar up and we've just bolted it directly to the bumper mounts and we're wrapping it with a strap then we're using the engine hoist over there to hook up to this guy put a little bit of pressure on it so hopefully we can get the whole body to sit up while the floor pan stays down first day we basically just spent uh, setting up the welder getting all these little bits and pieces off the car making sure the brake lines were disconnected from the body all those little little things Where's that? I don't know I did it to you. no you didn't Always blaming me. Yeah. Okay, pull it out. That's what she said. Okay, it's yours. One across the back. Right here. Just one across the back and then one from that corner to this corner you were thinking? Yep, and then from here to the crossbar, the crossbar to there. Literally like... Like this and... Yep. More liquid courage. We'll give it a shot. We'll be good. Fire extinguisher. Go this way a little. Come on! Well, hold this then, because I already got her in play. Wilder. Hey. Yep. Yeah. Who says K and then doesn't wait? <laughs> and a little bit on the bottom. You're sitting over there. You know what I'm saying? Welder's not even on. Fucking guy just walks away. I guess it's break time. Ooh, that's kind of bright. So doors are off. Uh, everything's off. Steering's disconnected. Um, floor pan bolts are loose. We've broken a bunch of them trying to get them off. So we're going to have to uh, kind of lift the body and see what's still connected. And then we'll have to cut them with the sawzall. Um, Brake lines are off, master is disconnected, the electrical is all disconnected. So now we can just finish welding in our bars to keep everything straight. And then uh, we're ready to peel it off and hopefully that goes smooth. But I doubt it. I doubt it. So we'll see. We'll see. Just one minute at a time here. Dad's been 
here to help that's great super helpful be a little bit lost without him right now so it's my first time doing it it's his you know seventh so cool this cage is temporary and definitely not pretty but the main reason for doing this is so the car doesn't move or change shape when the heater channels are cut out a few weeks from now Let's see I would like it to be 50 inches okay and uh, you uh, that one on I guess and sure. I'll go cut yeah so there's the, the final final layout but we don't think it'll move now shouldn't move right shouldn't move <laughs> shouldn't move <laughs> yeah one bar on each door a bar going across from those bars to each other and then to close the gap uh, those little bars in between and then a bar going from side to side so hopefully when we pull this off shortly it won't twist and now we're stuck on the you know the the rusted pieces uh, I don't think dad and I realized how bad this car was um, originally he only wanted to replace the one heater channel and it turns out both are actually pretty rotted out so um, yeah I'm gonna have to finish my coffee and then get to work We didn't quite get all the bolts off the floor pan yesterday. What kept happening was the bolt would actually break the heater channel, so the bolt just spins. Uh, typically the bolt goes directly into the heater channel and then it should come out of the heater channel. Um, but basically, yeah, it, it was breaking the heater channel, so the bolts are stuck in the heater channel. Um, I would have got this done yesterday had this have not been a pain in my ass. Uh, in, in previous videos I've talked about how good this thing is, but yesterday it just kept overheating and felt like it was literally on fire. We took the battery out and put this outside in the snow. After 15 minutes of it sitting outside in the, in the cold weather, it still felt like it was on fire. So we kept having to wait and wait and wait to uh, cut those bolts off. That's the goal this morning, is to get all the bolts cut off of the floor pan. I have three on the right side that are still fighting me, and I have, I think, four on the left side. So I have a couple hours of just using this and trying to cut the heads off those bolts in order to separate the floor pan from the body. But we have everything else ready to go. The master's been cut, the electrical's off the master, fenders are off, doors are off, our, our little cage is in place. It's not a perfect cage, but I mean, at the end of the day, as long as it keeps the car from, from moving, I'm good with it. The front end, actually, we've we've hooked up to the joists in the roof, the joists in the roof, and we're gonna use a come along just to bring the front end up, and we've got an engine hoist on the rear end, and we're gonna get it all situated in the air. Then once it's up, uh, we don't have a very high ceiling in here, but once it's up, then we're gonna try and slide the floor pan out and about over here. Shep, knock it off, buddy. Knock it off. It's just me. I'm just talking to these guys. Huge shout out to my dad. He's been very helpful on this one. Um, yeah, he's on his way now with another grinder, some discs. Um, he lives close to the store, so I called him this morning and he was going to come over here anyways because we had planned on getting this done yesterday and of course the milwaukee grinder pissed us off so he wants to get it done just as much as i do how's um oh you better say hi Good morning what's going on pal this is right. not it's not gonna... i'm gonna use the weapon i'll try using the milwaukee and see how far i get Look, it's smoking. I think it caught fire. What? Big puff of smoke just came out. Oh, I smell it. And it, it, uh, 
I wanted the camera to see. <laughs> big, big puff of smoke come out, and it's still smoking. How's it going? I got half of one. You got half of one? Yep. How did I bite through one and you went half of one? you already started the one. No, don't lie. You did the little one? Don't lie. You did the little one. I did the 13. Yeah. Oh. Me shoulder. Yeah. Holy. Oh. So it's got more torque. Oh, yeah. No, this one's not released yet. What one? This one up here. Well, shit, it's super close. Yeah, it's close, but it's no. Oops. No bueno. No bueno. Okay. Exciting. Oh, look at the shit on that. No, are these, do you think these will be wide enough just to set the body right on? What a redneck setup. Yes, but why isn't it break to free? I don't know. This is free. This is all free. So they've urethaned right up around this firewall piece. Of course, now we've got to cut it all by hand because it is literally holding the car up. There's no bolts in it. And that jack is about a half inch away from touching. Back end's already released. And it's already starting to separate, but we're caught right there where the urethane is. Just as I said there was no bolts left in the floor pan, it turns out I forgot two up front. <laughs> They were hidden in the spare no, tire compartment did. covered by we did. rubber I gotta move grumps. this so that it can see the whole car. Pop, Pop goes the Volkswagen. Oh, we could grind on this. <laughs> hey, listen. bar. You could try going up a bit. This couldn't have been sketchier. I've heard so many horror stories when the body comes off the floor pan that the body rolls if it's not hoisted correctly. The roof made quite a bit of noise, but everything stayed intact and ended up working great. This was a fantastic setup and I will definitely be using it for my 69. If mine falls, it won't take my teeth and my forehead off. It's starting to shift it pretty hard, but we're close, eh? Oh, yeah. The shifter's going to hit. We gotta move stuff. Now what? We gotta move stuff. 
These have to go over here because they're going for the body. Here. Here, pick one. They're going for the body. More. That should do it. Pull it. I'm going to lift the front end, okay? Uh. I have to. Okay. Just go slow. Down? No, I need to go another six inches. Well, we did it. We got the floor pan off the body. It was, um, how you would say, a pain in the ass. <laughs> but uh, at the end of the day, uh, it really, really wasn't that bad. It was the rotten spots on the heater channel that caused the issues, and we had to just sit there and grind the heads off the bolts in order to allow those bolts to release um i made some notes because it's the day after as i said before this this car is set to be in a show this coming spring i used to be in the show world but um i had a big big lifted truck and i kind of promised myself when i bought this the idea was that i would get back into the shows and, and go out with uh, a couple of my friends so we could actually do what we used to do and, and kind of get back into that scene. Day to day. <laughs> but obviously this is different for me because somebody built my truck. Um, I did a lot of the work but somebody generally engineered and built my truck. I'm doing all this myself. Obviously my father is helping me and I'm extremely grateful for that. Majority of it's gonna be done by myself and uh, obviously I'll have a little bit of help along the way which is fantastic. If you know me, you know that I love my powder coating and I really like making things clean and, and respectable. Um, so with the amount of parts on this floor pan, I'm truly considering just stripping the floor pan and having all the little pieces powder coated. Um, that way, you know, the, the longevity and, you know, if anyone ever does look underneath the car, they'll at least appreciate that uh, I went the extra step. It is a lot because you have to remove all the bushings and sandblast everything down and then, you know, powder coat. So we'll see, I'm gonna make my mind up probably this week. I'll get a couple quotes for pricing. Uh, there's not that many parts. I'm gonna walk you through the uh, the floor pan quick and the body and uh, show you, you know, what the two halves look like and kind of how they go together, how this car kind of uh, comes together to make one. So as you can see, the floor pan and body are completely separated. This is a 74 Super Beetle, so it does have a different bracket on the floor for mounting seats. That's my big dilemma right now because I ordered floor pans for my 69, which are over there, right there, and they have a different mounting bracket on them for the seat. When it comes to finding this style of seat, it's a lot harder than finding the other style. So I'm considering just using those pans in this car and then buying more for the other car outside. Uh, that way I don't have an issue finding seats for this because it, it never came with a, a, a set of stock seats and I want this car to have stock seats. It came with some 90s weird looking seat so that doesn't fit this era car. I don't want them in the car. I want the original seats. So um, obviously they won't be original but they'll still be a beetle seat that would be in here if I change the floor pan. The next problem is these floor pans are $100 more each versus those ones with the different seat rails. So I'm considering using the other seat rails because not only is it cheaper for those floor pans, uh, they're the thickest ones but they're still $100 less than the ones with this seat bracket. So yeah, not quite sure what I'm going to do yet, but I'll also figure that out this week. So floor pans and seats will be figured out this week and the powder coating. So powder coating, I meant all these little things like, like this, this arm, pretty much on both sides. That's it. 
Um, the floor pans are getting completely replaced on both sides. Then everything will get coated nicely and uh, we're gonna wire brush everything and coat it all with a bit of an undercoating or body liner. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do yet, but we'll see this week. I'll keep you guys updated. Um, and then I'm gonna powder coat most likely all these bars. The one part is uh, these are pressed in, I believe. So that might be kind of difficult, but we'll see. Not quite sure. Um, but as you can tell, this side's super obvious. The bolts just broke off and we're spinning in the floor pan. It looks kind of rough. This is initially why we thought the car needed a heater channel. It was this side. We, we noticed, you know, I'll show you in a minute. But we noticed the heater channel was pretty rough, so taking it off, you can see the floor pan's pretty rough. And then as you come around, it gets pretty rough going into the battery area. Both floor pans, while it's apart, can be replaced. The body. So you can see here, the actual heater channel is pretty rotted out on that side, on the driver's side. It goes right up into the front where it's rotted out and then this side is actually all rotted out back here. At the end of the day this was uh, a great choice. I was concerned that I was kind of going too far. My dad only wanted to do, he wanted to leave the car together and scab it back together and I wanted to take it apart because I kind of had a feeling there was more going on so I'm glad that I looked. The big problem is, yeah, we have a show in a couple months and I really want to go to it. So I have to get on this and I have to be on it all the time. And with filming it, it makes it a little bit more difficult because I don't always want to be on camera. But whatever, I've had to force myself and this is the way it is. So this channel is going to get a lot of videos because I'm going to be constantly working on this thing whenever I have spare time. So subscribe, stay up to date. There's going to be a lot happening. And once this car is done, which should be in a couple months tops then the 69 gets started because I want to have the two of them this one I'll enjoy and drive around while I'm building the other one uh, it is kind of good that I only have room to do one at a time but hopefully in the future I can upgrade the shop and get a bit bigger of a space because this sucks right so alright guys thanks for watching I will see you in the next one